This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. And, uh, well, it's got a big problem. It turns on and then immediately turns back off. That's kind of what the viewer told me. Just, uh, doesn't power on for very long. That sounds like a pretty serious issue. Long story short, this viewer upgraded a few components. Uh, the graphics card for one, I believe this is an RTX 3070. And, uh, I'm hoping that's not the problem. And then also these case fans. So, before the upgrades were thrown in, the computer supposedly worked just fine. After the upgrades were included, that's when the powering on issue started. So again, it's, it's either a user error situation, which I would actually hope for, because if it's something that's just miswired, that's a very quick fix. It won't cost us anything. Uh, but if it is a component problem, I'm hoping it's the fans to blame and not the graphics card, because this thing is super expensive and I don't have another 3070 lying around to replace for free. So we'll see. By the end of this one, though, I'm still hoping that we can have the system back up and running for him. Are you ready for this one? Stick around. Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a sweet discount. I've just got to say, a quick side note here. Holy GPU sag. This thing, uh, <laughs> it's, it's... It's not horizontal, that's for sure. I think we're gonna have to throw in a little uh, prop here for him. I've got a few uh, that I ordered just for cases like this because the sag is pretty rough. I mean, it should be something like that and it just, it hangs. I mean, that's like a full degree, maybe two degrees of sag there. So yeah, we'll take care of that for him. Hey there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new here, check out the video description. It'll have info as to how all of this works. Just know that everything we do is free of charge, including replacing components. It's because of your viewership and uh, the coinciding relationships that we've built with vendors, with uh, manufacturers of components like motherboards, cases, etc. because of your viewership that we're able to do this. So thank you again for that support, just watching videos like this. Even if you have ad blocker on, you know, at the end of the day, it still helps to have that viewership stack up each video. So thank you for that. Uh, but uh, for now, we need to get started with this rig. And what I'm going to do is power it on first, or at least attempt to, um, and see if we can't replicate what the owner is describing essentially the system either turning on and off right away or not turning on at all. It's important that we start here and that we have a baseline because as a PC technician, whatever you want to call what this is, this role that I'm playing, it's important that I'm on the same page as the owner of the rig. The owner could have told me something completely different than what's actually happening. And if I don't gather that data for myself, if I don't see it with my own eyes, I might be led down rabbit holes that have nothing to do with the actual issue. And I might not even be able to solve the problem at the end of the day. So power on at the rear. I mean, we are getting LEDs. I do see LEDs at the rear of the motherboard. Let's see if uh, we get power. Nope. So that's weird. We're getting RGB uh, LEDs in the DRAM. Those are lighting up, but we're not getting power. Like no, no power at all. The system doesn't want to power on. Let's try the power button behind here. Still nothing. So I'm basically just forcing a manual power on scenario and the rig just doesn't want to turn on. Okay, this looks like it could potentially be a wiring issue. One of the first things I want to check. So let's see what we've got here. I am still a bit suspicious with regards to this wiring. Now, Jesus, there's actually, <laughs> there's actually a lot of zip tying going on here. All these connections do look sound. I've even uh, kind of tinkered with front IO a bit just to make sure that wasn't miswired. He did have polarity for his hard drive LED uh, backwards. I fixed that for him, but it still wouldn't post. Uh, we've got, let's see, the 24 pin is completely connected. It's all, it's slotted all the way in. Uh, same goes for the eight pin EPS up top. Uh, this here looks good. So what I'm gonna do now is disconnect everything non-vital. So we're gonna start with uh, these USB cables down here, front IO. We're gonna disconnect his SATA cables, SATA data cables, uh, and uh, much of the AIO stuff behind the motherboard tray. We're not gonna keep the system on long. We just wanna see if that will fix any of these issues. Also notice he's missing like, so he's missing his HD audio cable for some reason, even though this case does support HD audio, unless it's wired somewhere else I'm not familiar with. And then uh, he's also missing his USB 3.0 connection, which you should also get with this case. So uh, there's some things we need to do after the fact as well for this rig. But of course, even with only the 24 pin, 8 pin EPS, and two supplemental 8 pins for the graphics card connected, 
the system is still exhibiting the same symptom whereby the lights are just turning on, but uh, we don't actually get power. Like, there's literally no response from this platform. So the next thing I'm gonna do is remove the graphics card and try powering it on then. The graphics card is very easy to remove and it's one of the reasons why I'm going to tackle it uh, as early as we are. I've already cleared the CMOS. I've already checked that the RAM is seated correctly. If removing the card doesn't fix the issue, we'll tackle DDR4 just by replacing those DIMMs with a known working DIMM from my stash. If that still doesn't work, then uh, we will have to test the power supply. Although I don't expect the power supply is the, is the culprit here because we are getting power at least to some extent. As long as you're covering all your bases, regardless of the order, I think it's best just to pick the things that are easier to check first. So let's get to that graphics card. So out she comes, two cables disconnected. We've got the uh, screws removed at the rear and we'll do a quick physical inspection of what we can see on this card. I don't see any burn marks around the gold fingers at the base of the card. Uh, the two eight pins look to be pretty clean. Again, we can't see much else because of the back plate and obviously the uh, the cooling shroud, but uh, yeah, all of his ports, everything looks okay. The card wasn't powering on at all. We weren't getting fan spinning or anything when we were attempting to power the system on. So I don't think this is the issue, but we do need to check and rule it out. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, it powered on right away. That's not a good sign. Um, I'm, I'm pretty surprised by this, but it does look like the system is at least trying to some extent to post, which is, way better off than we were before. I think it's training memory now because it's been off for so long and there were hardware changes apparently made. So we, we should, I don't wanna leave it on for too long because again, I've disconnected pretty much everything, including the pump, but there we go. So we're in the BIOS. That was our issue. Uh, the CPU obviously has integrated graphics. I don't know what CPU it is, but we've got the HDMI cable wired into the motherboard and we have picture. So that tells me that it is more than likely the card since it was the only thing we changed between the last run and this one. To triple check though, I'm gonna plug this into a separate rig and uh, yeah, make sure that it is in fact the issue. It would uh, not be good of us to assume that without double checking somewhere else. So let's do that right now. 12 seconds later. Right, so here is how we're gonna confirm this. I'm gonna let the camera run the entire time so that you see uh, that I'm not uh, manipulating things between clips. Not that I expect you to think that about what we do here, but just to show you how I'm doing it in real time. So I've got the power supply on now and I'm going to, do I have to jump? No, I have a physical power switch here. So power on looks good. Wait a minute. This, uh, this shouldn't be happening. Why? <laughs> why is the system posting? Why is it even powering on? And why wasn't it in his rig? Okay, this could be a power supply problem. His card is actually Okay. See, and that's why it's always important to triple check your work. Even when you think something is to blame, you always have to double check it somewhere else with totally separate variables because, uh, well, we could have ended up telling this guy I had a dead graphics card when in reality, it worked perfectly fine. Could it be these cables that are bad or maybe a rail on the power supply that's bad? We're gonna find out. And would you look at that? Holy cow, this unit is totally cooked with the exception of one five volt lead, it looks like everything else, the 12 volt lines are all shot. So that might explain why the RGBs were illuminating, just a low power five volt here, but nothing was turning on. The higher power stuff, the 12 volt stuff, looks like those rails are cooked. So this power supply needs to be, uh, yeah, needs to be replaced big time. Uh, but hold, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Am I, I'm getting whiplash here. Why on earth would the system post without a graphics card installed, if... What, why would it work? If, I, if all I did was remove the card, why does that suddenly make the power supply work again? But then when I hook it up to my tester, it fails. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So the same as before, when I power the power supply on, we immediately get fails across the board, right? It looks like the entire unit is cooked and that's no good, but, Check this out. All I'm gonna do is disconnect the PCI six pin that was wired in. That's the same cable that runs into the graphics card. And then we'll power cycle once more. And look at there, no errors, except for obviously the 12 volt PCI cable we just connected. It's noticing that it's not getting power through there and that's because I just disconnected it. But everything else with the, well, these ripples are pretty bad. Um, 
Otherwise though, the unit is fine, which is why it powered on before. So there's either an issue with that PCIe cable or an issue with that uh, connector on the unit itself. So we're gonna try a different plug and see if that fixes it. Now to be clear, the power supply is gonna be replaced regardless. I'm not a fan of that ripple or slew rate. So we're gonna just outright remove it from the equation to ensure that, uh, well, things run healthily for a few more years at least. Uh, despite this rig being a bit older, it otherwise is a very healthy combination of hardware. 9th gen Intel and uh, a 3070 will last you a very long time depending on the games you play. So I, I'm only doing this just because I'm curious about what the actual culprit is as to why the card works on that platform, but not here, but then the rest of the rig works here with that card removed. So I'm going to swap ports and give it another shot with the graphics card installed again. Well, that didn't work. The system still refuses to power on. So it's very likely there's something internally wrong with the power supply that I'm not gonna be able to fix here. I'd rather just replace the unit outright with a uh, frankly better one anyway, one that uh, hopefully has uh, less ripple as well. This uh, could potentially be an issue of an incorrect cable set. I can't confirm that this cable set is the correct one to use with this Corsair power supply. I, I don't have that, that, that info right in front of me. But uh, if this is not the correct cable kit, then you should not be running this with a different unit, especially from a different manufacturer. Um, you'll have all the different wires in the wrong pin places. Uh, the wrong pin out could result in, uh, you know, reverse current flow. You have ground where you should have a 12 volt, etc., And you could cause some very big problems. Just ask me how I know. And just in case you're wondering, the system doesn't boot up with the card in the lower full length slot, and it doesn't boot up with a different card entirely connected. As long as these cables are being used, we have no power at all. So that is, um, well, with the exception of the five volt. It's just really, really weird all around. So let's go ahead and get the power supply out of here, and uh, we'll go ahead and upgrade them at the same time. By the way, a bit of backstory, it never hurts to ask a few questions of the owner and what they maybe did before they dropped it off with you. Because if I had known what I know now, I probably wouldn't have tested the card first. I would have tested the power supply. He told me that he took this card out of his rig and put it in his brother's and it worked just fine. Well, what do you know? I mean, we confirmed the same thing. We put this in a makeshift test bench and it worked just fine. So you don't have to interrogate owners. You know, you don't want, you don't want to put them up to a lie detector and you know, are you telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You don't need to do that. But any sort of context might save you a bit of time in the troubleshooting process. Um, so just, yeah, the more you know. That is, uh, that's, a, that's a lot of zip ties, and this isn't even all of them. The new unit going in is an NZXT C1000, kind of befitting because this is also an NZXT case with some Razer branding. Just gotta wiggle this mass of cables <laughs> all the way through. He was missing a few and had to use a few uh, cable splices and things before, so I made sure to connect a bit more than we probably need, just in case he wants to add even more peripherals later on. Got this tightened down here at the back and we can begin the wiring process all over again. Uh-oh, Leah's crying. Ooh, she seems upset. Meanwhile. Phew, okay. Uh, that, I believe, is it for cable management. I might have missed something, but we'll triple check when we power the system on. I think all of the SATA connections are sound. Uh, I'm not missing anything obvious. All right, now we're gonna attempt to cable manage this mess. And uh, we're just gonna skip straight to it. Three, two, one. Uh, yeah, it's not my best work, but it'll do, it'll do. Now we'll slide his graphics card back in, nice and gently. There we go. We'll wire things up here. I have two separate eight pins now running to the card. Probably wouldn't matter too much for a 3070, but we're gonna do it anyway. All right, all right, and here is what we're working with. So um, pretty clean still. I'm, I don't really like the way that the cables, uh, or the tubes, I should say, from the AIO run to the block. The block is also turned 90 degrees clockwise, and it's kind of bothering me, but it's the way he did it. I'm not gonna change that. But uh, I really like the way that the card now sits with the, uh, little bracket that we included here. It's just a cheap, easy, I think it's Easy DIY is the name of the brand. I'll have it linked below if you wanna fix your old graphics card sag on the cheap. It just sits underneath the shroud and props it up a bit. So pretty nice there. We are ready to power on. Will a replacement power supply be the answer to our problems? I have a pretty good feeling it will be. So let's, uh, let's cross our fingers here. Power at the rear, looks good. Let's try power up front. Let's try power up front. There we go. 
Okay. Everything seems to be working right out of the gate, except for the two front fans for the radiator, and it boots up very quickly as well. Holy dust. Oh, about to sneeze. Any second now. Nope, no sneeze. Come on, let's see. We have any, yeah, oh yes, okay. We have one, one SATA power cable. I knew if there was any cable I was gonna miss, it was gonna be SATA power. There's like 10 of these back here and that's not an exaggeration. Let's see if that fixes it. Yes, those fans are spinning now. That's good news. Uh, the pump is also making a weird knocking sound. It sounds like there's air in the pump. So, yes. Oh, that goes away. So we just gotta do a little bit of shake and bake. Hopefully this AIO has a bit, uh, bit more life left in it. I don't know how old it is, but that knocking definitely isn't good for it. Assuming it's what I think it is, which is air trapped in there. So just gotta wiggle the case around a bit while it's on to get those air bubbles in the radiator. And if that still doesn't work, then what the viewer can do is flip this uh, radiator upside down so that the tubes are down here. And uh, after a bit more rotating, he might be able to get the air trapped at the top of the radiator instead of in the pump chamber. One other thing you'll notice I did uh, off camera here was zip tie the tubing to the top of the case and uh, actually did it through one of the fan holes that uh, you would normally thread a screw through. And uh, that keeps things looking a bit more clean when you're looking at it from the side, totally optional. Uh, and again, it's probably not gonna last much longer because this thing is still knocking a bit when, uh, when sitting upright. Again, I'll just show you here the sound it makes. So if we just sit it like that, there you go. You can hear just a faint knocking sound coming from the block. So I've told the viewer about it and uh, he knows it'll probably need to flip this around. I'm not sure if it'll go away on its own though, and I'm not going to leave it on long enough to, to figure that out. It's not a super sensitive issue at this point, but uh, something that might need to be addressed a bit later. And after quickly showing the good guys over at Corsair uh, what was actually happening with the AIO, they offered to replace it free of charge for the owner and they're actually gonna mail it out to him like tonight as we speak. So pretty awesome stuff. We'll have to worry about anything there. Well, this was a bit of a roller coaster, yeah? <laughs> I uh, initially thought it was a card and turns out I was wrong. I'm glad I was wrong. I'm glad that we tested after the fact and triple checked our work before turning it into the teacher, right? You don't wanna replace a card only to find out that the card actually wasn't to blame to begin with. And this is not a cheap card by any means. So the fact that it was the power supply and that it didn't actually kill from what it seems like any component in here is a good thing. I'm not gonna bother taking apart this unit because, well, it's, it's not all that expensive. At this point, I found out when I revealed to the owner what the issue was that this was actually RMA a couple of years ago for an issue related to power delivery, obviously. And uh, so yeah, that knowing that info ahead of time might've also helped me a bit, but it is what it is. I'm, I mean, if we, if we open this up and found what the culprit was, I still wouldn't recommend trying to replace it. Um, it's just gonna take a lot of time having to source whatever part you need to source and then actually the, the labor going into replacing that part, soldering or what have you, you might as well just buy another unit. They're only like between 50 and 100 bucks usually, a decent power supply. You could obviously spend more than that and the one that's in here I think is worth a bit more than that. But uh, I just wanted to set him up for a few more years. He's got more breathing room from a wattage standpoint, a great efficiency as well, great warranty through NZXT. And uh, it all looks really clean again. I really like the way that this card sits now. It's no longer sagging. That's like, if, if we didn't fix anything else about this rig, the sagging issue is, I mean, at the very least, a very aesthetically pleasing addition to this rig. With that, if you guys enjoyed watching this one, be sure to let me know and give this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, you can join our public Discord server. That's totally free. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.